Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to let you know I'm probably going to make a few goofs in this run through and if you want to know what they are, be sure to set your subtitles onto the Klingon channel. That's right, the Klingon channel where all of my mistakes will be dutifully recorded. Kapla! And now, today Rado runs through the clans of Caledonia, which is a new economic simulation set in the Scottish Highlands of the 19th century. And I'm going to be doing a two play run through today so you can see what it's all about. I've already got the game mostly set up, although I've still got a little bit of stuff to do. In this game, I'm going to be the white player, Jen will be the blue player. And as part of setup, first thing we have to do is actually create our Scottish Highlands. The game comes with four different two sided boards. And you put them together in such a way that there are, there's always a big lake or lock here in the center of the board. And uh, according to the rules, there are 16 different board combinations you can get by mixing and matching these two-sided boards. So I've already done that. And as a little bonus to tighten the board up a bit, which the rules only suggest you do in a two or three player game, I have put out a couple of uh, cities that serve no purpose other than just blocking spaces that prevent players from being able to grab land in those areas. So it kind of replicates if we were playing with more players, hey, if somebody built in those spaces, I couldn't get there. Well, those spaces have already been occupied by these cities, these Scottish villages and towns and whatnot. The other uh, setup element is in the four corners, there are these different harbor tiles. And the game comes with a bunch of them. In fact, every one of these cities on the other side is a harbor tile. And in this one, we've got the meat the uh, convert goods into more goods, the get contracts, and the um, change your resource chain upgrades, or not upgrades, bonuses that you can get if you build if you build such a way that you can get access to these ports. Uh, these ports give you a one-time bonus you can use over the course of the game. So if you build into these four corners, you've got four bonuses you can use. And finally, the last thing we have to do as part of setup is each player is going to pick a Scottish clan. And the game comes with eight. Right now, in a two-player game, we're choosing between Clan Robertson, Stewart, and Buchanan. But there's also Cunningham, Ferguson, McEwen, Campbell, McKenzie, and McDonald. And they're all very different. I mean, you can see McDonald is certainly very different. Uh, and, you know, they definitely change the way the game feels. And also, part of the randomization is that each one of these clans got a random random starter tile. And you see here's plenty of other ones that we didn't grab. So this will determine how much money we start with and what goods we have on hand. Now, I'm going to be the first player, which means in reverse turn order, we choose a clan. So Jen gets to pick first. So does she want Buchanan, Stewart, or Roberts? Or Robertson. Well, I, I know I forgot to mention another thing we've set up over here. There are six contracts, export contracts, because the rest of the world wants our fine Scottish goods, our our you know our lamb and our wool and our bread and and all of that and our whiskey, of course, and so. Um, the decision we make might have to do with what contracts are available. More of them will come out over the course of the game. But then there's also five randomly chosen bonuses. This game takes place over five rounds. And at the end of each round, we are going to score bonus points depending on how well we've hit certain metrics. And these are the ones that came out in this game. But there's a whole bunch more um, you know, that will come out. So in this game, if we look, at the end of the first round, we're going to score a point for every good we've got on hand. And then at the end of the second round, you know, uh, normal or upgrade. At the end of the second round, we score points for upgraded goods. At the end of the third round, we score points for how many laborers we've deployed on the board. The fourth, how many upgrades we've made to our overall economy. And the fifth and final, how many contracts we have completed that ship meat to other parts of the world. So we know these are our, our bonus scoring opportunities over the course of the game and the order that they will come out in. And so that's actually a big consideration because the last one in the game, like I said, is shipping meat. And to do that, you need contracts. And Clan Buchanan's special power is they are the contract kings. And interestingly, all of the special powers of these clans are based on the real historical um, clans of Scottish history. So... Jen Sinkin, she might go for the Buchanans because having multiple um, contracts and really focusing on, you know, beef and, and uh, lamb, beef and venison, would really 
pay off big for her at the end of the game. So I think, yeah, she's going to take Clan Buchanan, which means every other player only has one contract on hand, but Jen ha can have two contracts at any given time. Plus, she gets a discount on um, earning contracts as well, which helps her out. Let's see. And now, so this was the bonus she gets. So she's going to start with 55 bucks, one whiskey, one wool, and one grain. So, all right, a whiskey, a wool, a grain, and 55. So here's 5, 10, 15, or uh, uh, 40, 50. Five. Fifty-five is is pretty standard. That's what most people start out with. And so that's it. Jen is now ready to go, although she is the second player. Uh, now, uh, that leaves me, Clan Robertson or Clan Stewart. Clan Robertson, uh, apparently they were a clan um, that were really known for mastery of the waterways, or they, they were centered in a really uh, heavy river area. So their bonus is they get discounts whenever they build on deltas, which is basically places where the lakes combine with the locks. So anybody else would have to pay four bucks to build here or four bucks or four pounds to build here. But Clan Robertson only has to pay two or maybe even one, depending on what they build there. So that'll save you a lot of cash. Plus they start with two milk and some whiskey plus 55 pounds. So that's pretty cool. This can save you a lot. Although looking around, the way the random cities came out, one delta is blocked, a delta is blocked over here. So two of the potential delta spaces are already blocked off. I think, yeah, I, with, with this particular layout, I'm going to skip Robertson and instead go for Stewart. Because, well actually, I'm, as much as anything else, I'm attracted by what they're starting with. They're starting with 55 pounds plus another five. So they start with 60. And money gets tight, tight, tight in this game. So I just want to have some more cash on hand. So I'm actually going to start with 60 um, and one wool and one bread. Right. So where's the wool? One wool and one bread. All right. And uh, so that's my, my starting capital. And my special powers, Clan Stewarts, they were kind of a nobility clan, I guess. They, oh, they get a couple extra bonuses. They already start out upgraded on their water canal shipping technology. Jen, she's starting out at level zero. She cannot ship along rivers. I can ship along rivers. And if I keep upgrading, I can ship further and further across the locks or the, the lakes. Jen starts out with none of that. Jen just gets to have two contracts instead of one at a time. And let's see. Also, I get to start out with three bonus merchants. Everybody starts with two, but I've got three more. So I've got five merchants, yo. Woohoo. Okay. And last but not least, my special ongoing power is whenever I do market actions, I make a dollar. Every time I buy or sell a good in the market, I make an extra pound. So that'll keep the money coming in. And it's interesting. If for most clans, when you do a market action, you want to make it a really big market action. Because after you do it, the market will shift and you want to take advantage of that. Clan Stewart wants to make a bunch of small, kind of micro transactions because they make money every single time. So they want to take a lot of time trading where another player would only want to do all their trading all at once and just get that done for the round and be more efficient. So. <clears throat> We are on it, but there's one more thing we've got to set up, folks. Each of us now is going to put out two of these little laborers to either be miners or forestry guys that will be the backbone of our, of, of our money-making potential. I'm the first player, so I choose first. And I can either put out, it's going to cost me six plus however much the space says to put out a forestry worker or 10 plus whatever the space says to put out a miner. And of course, miners can only go on mountain spaces and forestry guys can only go on, lumberjacks can only go on forestry spaces. I think, hmm. Well, it's interesting. There's this thing. I mean, I know. I can see it at the end of the game. I want to generate meat because the more meat contracts I fulfill, the more points I get at the end of the game. And this port bonus is a... Whenever I want to use it, get a free meat to help complete a contract. So that's pretty cool. And because this city is here, um, there's only two spaces that are relatively close to it. So I think I'm going to go on ahead and start building in this space. Although this is an expensive space. It cost me six pounds plus six or ten to occupy this space. But it'll get me very close to this port right off the bat. So. Since it costs so much to come in here, and the reason it costs so much is because there's forest and there's mountain here. This is a much more flexible place to go. Uh, I'm going to go on ahead and put a forestry guy here, which means it costs me six plus the six here. I've just spent 12 of my starting 60 pounds. 
So I just spent um, 20, I get eight in change. So now I've got a little forestry man who's gonna start making cash for me over the rest of the game. Now, Jen gets to place one, and then Jen places another, and then I place the last one. So it's like, if there were three players, it'd be one, two, three, and then three, two, one, as we grab these starter spaces. So now Jen, I think she would rather make miners. Even though it costs more right up front, it'll pay off more because you make more money off of mining. And remember, oh wait, no. If Jen had taken Clan Robertson, there would be all these great delta, like this, she would put it in this mountain right here because it's on a delta and Jen would get a big discount for building there. But, um, right, in a, I'm sorry, I actually misspoke earlier. It's a $2 discount in a two player game and a $3 discount with three or four players. It's, it's not based on the type of building you build, but rather the player count. But Jen, she doesn't have that, but she does still want to make a mountaineer. And you know what? She's going to build here anyway because this mountain, it only costs one buck. Although, if she's building out here in the center of um, the highlands, she's not building close to any of these port bonuses, and she'd like to get those port bonuses too. Hmm. This mountain would be pretty nice. It only costs three to build over here, and then she's only a little ways away. She'd have to upgrade to be able to ship across locks to get to this port. But here's the problem. In a two-player game, the board tightens up considerably. Not only do you have the option of tightening up by putting these cities out, but in a two-player game, you cannot build in the outer edges. Wherever all these clouds are, and you can see there's kind of a dark outline, in a two-player game, you cannot build on the outer ring. So Jen, she cannot build in this mountain because in a two-player game, it effectively doesn't exist. Ah, uh, oh, if Jen goes for this mountain, this is interesting. She's very close to that. Um, this is a bonus contract thing. Yeah, Jen, she's the contract queen. She wants even more access to contracts. So she's going to build here. The, to build in this mountain range costs 2 plus 10. So that costs her 12. So she also paid 12 for her first thing, just like me. One, two, three. Okay, and now Jen is going to get to build again. She could build another Mountaineer or another Forestry. I think she's just going to focus on Mountaineering because one of the things we can do is we can upgrade our Mountaineering or our, our Mining skills versus our Forestry skills. So it makes sense to really focus on one type or the other and then upgrade that industry. So now where else is she going to go? I mean, Jen could go over here and, you know, but this is the one time in the game where you are allowed to put stuff on the board not adjacent to existing stuff. Normally, you have to expand from where you already are. So Jen wants to have a far reach. I think with that in mind, Jen will pick um, this mountain over here. So this costs 1 plus another 10. That costs 11. All righty. And so she's 1, 2, 3, um, 4 spaces away. Uh, Right. Well, I mean, she'll have to expand here and here and then have the shipping to be able to get to this so she gets access to that bonus. But this was a really cheap mountain to build on. And so basically, Jen is kind of going to try and monopolize the eastern side of the highlands because she can expand from here and from here. All righty. And now I get to build one more. I'm going to go on ahead and focus on forestry the same way Jen focused on mountains. And where do I want to go? Let's see here. Um, you know what? There's an interesting thing about this game. There's a strong emphasis on um, expanding into areas that are adjacent to your opponents because you can get big bonuses off of that. So I think I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to build over here in this super cheap forest that only costs one plus my forestry guy. That's uh, one plus uh, six is seven. So I'll pay seven and I'm going to set up shop right next door to Jen. Okay, that's it, folks. We are now done with setup, and we can truly begin the game. All righty. So, I am the first player, and on your turn, you get to um, do one of seven actions. You can trade, you can get export contracts. Most players can only pick up one, but Jen, in a single action, can pick up two, and she's a bit more efficient that way. You can expand, which means taking more units off of your board, paying the costs to put them out, and um, which gives you access to more goods and all that. You can expand your operations, although you have to expand from one of your existing spaces. You can upgrade your shipping. Now, I already start out with some upgrade shipping, but you can pay to upgrade even more so that you can ship across rivers and across locks. You can upgrade your technology, which means I could upgrade my logging capability so I make more money off of my lumberjacks. Or I could upgrade my merchants and give myself more merchants. I already started with a bunch, but Jen, she could um, pay four bucks to get another merchant so she can do more merchant activities if you upgrade technology. 
All righty. You can hire a merchant. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, all right. Um, right. Oh, no. Upgrade technology. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, upgrading technology means only uh, upgrading your mining or your, your lumberjacking. Hiring a merchant, which is kind of the same thing, because merchants are effectively considered a technology for some bonuses. Anyway, you can pay four bucks to get another merchant. At the beginning of the game, I've got five merchants. I can do five trade actions in a given round. Jen can only do two. Or you can fulfill a contract. And most players can only do one on a turn, but again, Jen could do two at once if she wants to be more efficient with her turns. And then the last thing you do is you can pass, which means you're out of the round, but the first player to pass scores 16 pounds. The second player to pass in a two-player game only gets 13. So you get a little bit of a bonus for passing earlier than your opponents. Plus, that means if you're the first to pass, you'll also be the first player to go next round. Right! That's all the stuff I can do. I can do a million things. So what am I going to do? Well, remember, I want to do a lot of, I've got a lot of merchants. I want to do a lot of stuff in the market, particularly because at the end of this round, everybody has the potential to score points for having basic goods on hand. Wait a minute. Is this the one for basic goods or basic goods buildings? Let's double check that. Because uh, there's eight different scoring tiles you can have, just like there's eight different port tiles. Um, there's actually a few extra ones that are uh, Kickstarter exclusives as well. Or not exclusives, they are added to the base game. But anyway, they were bonuses for Kickstarter. Stretch goals, yeah. Right, so gain one glory for each of your... Or, oh, right, so this is not for having goods. This is for having um, goods producing spaces on land. So that means this round, we both, if at all possible, want to do a lot of building, because the more building we do, the more points we get. This is the one that says, hey, at the end of the second round, we'll get points not for having the buildings, which is what this little plus is, but for having the actual goods themselves. Now here's the thing. I could make my whole first round strategy around trying to achieve that to score points, or I could say to heck with that. I'm instead going to focus not on trying to score a lot of points here, but set myself up to score a lot more points here or here. Um, because everything I do in this game has the potential to build up for later rounds and score me a lot of points. Or I could just be focusing right from the get-go to do nothing but get and fulfill meat contracts so I can get a huge um, windfall at the end of the game for all the meat contracts I did. If I, you know, so you have a lot of different strategies to pursue. Right. Um, but I think the first thing I'm going to do of all my actions, I'm going to go on ahead and grab a contract. Because there's only six of them out here. And um, you know, I, I first come, first serve, baby. So which one am I going to grab? Well, I know meat contracts are important, and I know I've actually worked to ensure that I can get access to meat, so I think I'm going to take this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. Okay, I don't want this one. This is the only one that doesn't want meat. So which is the best one I could do? This one wants some wool and bread. I've got some wool and bread. I need a little bit more bread and one meat. Yeah, I think I'm going to go on ahead and take this one. Uh, but I need three bread, and I only have one. This one needs two whiskey and cheese. This one needs two whiskey and... Um, yeah, I'm going to go for this one, because I've already started some bread. All right, so... My first action was, I just grabbed a contract. And now, to fulfill this contract on a later turn, I have to have three bread, one wool, which I do have, and I've got one of my three bread, and I need to have access to one cow, which means I have to actually put, pay the money to put uh, cattle out into a field someplace so that when I fulfill my contract, I can slaughter the cattle to produce meat. Although, interestingly, if I expand my shipping, I can get to this port, and that will get me the meat without having to spend time um, you know, developing a, you know, a cow field. All right, so anyway, so that was my turn. Turns are very quick in this game. You just do one thing, and then it's the next player's turn. So it's Jen's turn. Oh, wait, one more thing I forgot. There's an interesting thing. Right here, we're in round one. Whenever you take a contract, you make five pounds. Um, in the second round, if you take a contract, you don't make any. In the third round, you lose five pounds, and then 10 pounds, and then 15 pounds. So the game very strongly encourages you to take contracts early in the game. When there's a lot of competition, um, you know, a lot of people want our, our um, Scottish goods, so they're willing to pay extra to get these contracts. At the end of the game, um, you know, when a lot of our Scottish goods are available, it gets a little bit more, uh, it gets a bit tougher. Now we have to actually pay to get these contracts. Although again, Jen will benefit from that um, because of her bonus over the course of the game. So she's the contract thing. So anyway, so I made five more. And so hooray, that um, almost made up for all the money I had to spend to get these things out here. Now it is Jen's turn. So. Um, so she could rush right out and get a contract as well, 
but I can't take another contract. So Jen knows all these other ones are safe. She doesn't have to worry about rushing out after them. If there were more players and there was one she wanted, she'd probably try to grab it really quick. But since um, I've grabbed the only contract I can, because I can only hold one, Jen's going to go somewhere else right up front. I think Jen is going to... Ooh, is she going to go to the market to get a little bit more cash on hand? I think so. Jen is going to be the first to go to market. And she is going to... Now, Jen has two merchants. So in a given action, she can spend one or both. She can spend as many merchants as she wants to buy or sell one type of good. Jen wants a little bit more cash on hand. So she's going to send one, but, but you can only do one. Jen's going to send one merchant to sell, um, yeah, to, oops, sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 to sell um, some, uh, what do you call it? Some whiskey, because she started with one whiskey. Whiskey is currently worth 11. She's selling one, so that makes 11 pounds for her, so that'll give her some more cash to expand. Because I think Jen's thinking this round, she wants to build as uh, many production facilities as possible to score points, so she's gonna need more cash. So she's selling her whiskey, and now if she had two whiskey, she could send both of her guys and sell twice and make 22, but she only started with one whiskey, unfortunately. So she only sold one. Now. After you're done selling, however many things you bought or sold, the market adjusts that many times. So she sold one whiskey, so now whiskey has just dropped in price. It's only worth 10. So Jen made 11 bucks, and she wanted to do that really quick, just so she can start getting some more cash on hand. Actually, you know what? Maybe she should have sold this wool, because I've got wool, and I might try to sell wool as well. I don't have any whiskey, now that I think about it. And although, if wool drops only one, it's only gonna, it's gonna be four, it'll stay at four. So Jen's fine with that. She, she'll probably hold on to her wool because maybe she wants to do this contract, which requires meat for the end game and wool and wh oh, whiskey. She just got rid of whiskey, but that's okay. Jen's making money so she can actually start, um, you know, producing goods. So that was Jen's first turn. She went to the market. Now it is my turn again. So, um, now I want to get into a situation where I can actually, I've got the wool I need to produce this. I need more bread. So there's a, two ways I could get bread. One is I could go to the market and just buy that bread. Bread right now costs 10. I could send two merchants and pay 20 pounds to get two bread. And then after I do that, the, it would go up twice, so bread costs 11 in the future. And then I would have the three bread I need to complete this contract. Um, or instead, I can do it the hard way and actually expand and start... Act First of all, I would have to pay a lot of money to make a wheat field. Um, that's going to cost me 18 plus wherever I build it. And then after that, I could spend 8 plus wherever I build to build a bakery. And then that means this wheat field plus this bakery are going to be generating bread for me for the remainder of the game. And so I, now, but I mean, if I want to fulfill this contract right now, really quick, because here's the thing, if I fulfill this contract this round and I've still got time, I could get another contract, which would get me another five bucks. If I take contracts in the second round, I'm, I won't get any money. So do I just go really, really fast and try to fulfill this thing really quick? Because what do I need to do? I need to buy two more, and then I need to increase my shipping. My shipping can get across rivers, but I need to get across one space of locks so I can reach this. And then I could complete this contract and get it done, diggity done, really, really fast. So that's pretty cool. Um, or I could do, like I said, I could set up my infrastructure, which will pay me off in points at the end of this round. Hmm, do I want to do that? Yeah, okay. I, I, although that's the other thing. Every time I go to the market, um, I make extra money. The game encourages me to do market stuff. So yeah, let's go to the market. Jen went to the market, she sold some whiskey, I'm gonna go to the market, and now I could go with as many of my merchants as I wanted, but I, Clan Stewart wants to do little jobs. So I'm only gonna go with two, um, whenever I go to the market to buy or sell, I immediately make a buck, so I just made a buck. And now I am going to buy two more bread. So that cost me 20, ouch. Alrighty, and then it went up two, but it really only cost me 19. Um, so now I've got all the bread I need to fulfill this contract, and I've got the wool, and as soon as I upgrade, I'll have the meat as well. Okay, so that was it. 
And I could still do more merchanty type stuff um, over the course of the game. I've still got three more merchants, so I could buy or sell more goods, although, to, although I have no goods. So, but um, before the round is over, I might um, buy some stuff. So, heck, I could drive the price up and then sell it in the following round. Who knows? Uh, maybe I won't build up much of an infrastructure at all. We'll see. So, that was my second turn. Jen's second turn. Right, so those so, so contracts are still waiting for her. She could go on ahead and rush them out. But Jen sold so she could start expanding. Particularly because since we're right here next to each other, Jen wants to expand before, you know, once one of us expands into this space, the other one can't. And this city blocks us. So there's a bit of a race to get in there. Jen is going to expand and uh, expand her mining, no, she could expand her mining operation by putting another miner over here so she'll make more money at the end of the round. Or this has access to mining, or there's a field here. So that means Jen could put cow, cattle or sheep or a, um, you know, a, a cheese factory or a bakery or um, grain producing or a whiskey producing space. And Jen still needs to think about what contracts she's going to grab. So Jen was thinking about this contract, which wants whiskey. Yeah, I think Jen, right off the bat, Jen is going to make some grain fields. Which is, I mean, which is the most expensive thing you can do. It costs 18. So, um, plus however, however much the land costs where you build. So, if Jen builds here, it's going to cost her 22. Now, Jen could build over here instead. It would only cost her 19, but she wants to build here and cut off my ability to expand in that direction. So, she's going to pay a little bit more for that. So, 18 for the field plus 4 is 22. So, you can see why she, uh, she sold that whiskey right off the bat. All right, so, and so she has moved in here. Now, at the end of the round, that wheat field is going to produce two wheat automatically. Okay, um, which, uh, which she will need to either sell to the market to make money, or she will need to have a bakery or a distillery to convert that wheat into bread or whiskey. Right, so that was Jen's second turn. She just expanded. Okay, now it's my third turn. Let's see here. I'm going to go on ahead and upgrade. It costs me four. Every time you want to upgrade your shipping technology, it costs me four. So there's five, one change. And now I have access. Uh, not only can I ship across rivers, which Jen cannot do yet because she hasn't gotten any shipping. I can ship across rivers and I can also ship across a single lock space, a single lake space. So that means I have access to this, this meat that I need to fulfill my contract. Woohoo! Okay, and now it's Jen's turn again. Um, so Jen's very, uh, right, so Jen is now going to expand once more. She's going to make a distillery, which is very expensive. It costs 10 plus the land. She's going to put it right here. That was cheap land, so it costs 11. And now at the end of the round, the wheat that this wheat field will produce, it's going to produce two. One of them can be turned into whiskey. All right. Um, and remember, whiskey is worth a lot of money. She could just sell that for money, or whiskey is needed for this contract, and this contract, and this contract, and this contract. So Jen is setting herself up to be able to produce whiskey. Plus, Jen has put two goods producers on the board. So that means she will have scored two bonus points at the end of the game, whereas I haven't actually built up my infrastructure at all. So that was my turn, or Jen's turn. My turn again. I'm going to go ahead and complete my contract now. Because I wanted to complete my contract really quick so that I can pick up another one while the first round is going and make an extra five bucks. So remember, I've got, a, a, can, on my whole turn, I'm going to complete this contract. Here's my wool. Here's my um, three um, bread. And here is the meat because I, I expanded my shipping so I could get to this port. And now, you can only use port actions once. So it's out. I can never use it again. Because uh, I'm the white player, but I can still, if I get build over close to these, I can still use the other ones. By the way, Jen, by building here, now has access to this port um, whenever she wants to use it. So anyway, so that automated journey of the meat, I have completed this contract. Yay! So what do I get? Well, I spent all this, I get all these. Um, that means it, it's kind of an import-export uh, arrangement. I exported steak, delicious um, um, meat, and wool, and bread, and we're going to import tobacco and hops, and uh, as a bonus, I get to build, I get to do one landscape expansion without having to pay the land cost. I get one parcel of land for free right now. Um, so, we uh, keep track of the fact that tobacco, for tobacco, has come into the country and um, we can also keep track of sugarcane and cotton. Those are the three goods that get brought in. Now, at the end of the game, 
I will score points for all the tobacco I have brought into the country. But the amount of points I, um, I get depends on how much tobacco has been brought in. The more tobacco gets brought in, the less this is worth. Um, so if only a little bit of tobacco gets brought in, I will score a lot of points for this for tobacco. If tobacco is the most common import, I won't score, I'll score what? I think two or th 20 or 30 percent less. But anyway, so this is just three points. Hops are always um, one point per hop at the end of the game. This is going to be um, three, four, or five points depending on how much tobacco was brought into over the course of the game by completing other contracts. And this right now lets me expand without having to pay land costs. So where am I going to expand? Well, I have to expand off of where I already am. Um, and so here, over here, remember, I, in a two-player game, I can't get to this. This costs one. I don't want to take advantage of that. This costs four. That's not bad. But this land right here costs six. And as soon as I get here, that means I will be close enough to reach this port. Because remember, I've got shipping. I can reach across. So I'm going to expand here because... Now, Jen, she cannot expand across water. But I can because I've got my shipping. This would normally cost six to get into this spot of land. But it's going to cost me nothing because I completed this delicious contract. So what am I going to put there? The reason it's so expensive is because there's forest and there's mountain and there's plains. So that means I could put anything there. I could put a forester guy or... A, I'm not going to put a miner because I've already decided I'm going to focus on forestry and get my forestry technology improved and stuff like that. But here's the thing. So do I want to put a lumberjack here so I'll be making more money at the end of the round so that I can start you know, spending that money in future rounds? Or remember, if I make any, if, you know, if I put you know, a field of sheep or cattle or any of these things, it'll be worth points to me at the end of, or one point at the end of the round. So do I do that? Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Well, it depends. What do I want to make? I'm, uh, before the round is over, I'm going to take another contract. What do these contracts need? Well, they all need whiskey. So this is interesting. Jen, she has made a field so she can generate her own wheat and then turn it into whiskey. I could just make a distillery. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. It cost me six. I'm going to make a distillery here. So it cost me 10 plus zero because of the bonus. So that cost me 10. I've now got a distillery. It doesn't do me any good with wheat. But unlike Jen, she spent a ton of money to make her own wheat fields. I like going to the market. So I'll just go to the market and buy my wheat. Thank you very much, so that I can convert it into whiskey. Because most of these, the rest of the world wants fine Scottish whiskey. Right, so that was my turn. And now I've got a reason to use more of my merchants to buy grain to put into that distillery. Yeah. Okay, so that was my turn. I completed a contract. And now it's Jen's turn. And Jen, up till now, she hasn't been worried about contracts, but now all of a sudden she realizes, oh crap, I could grab a contract. If she wants one, she better grab one quick, because I might take the one she wants. So, uh, I think Jen will, she was looking for one, right, she was looking at this one. So Jen is going to take a contract, um, which she'll need meat, she'll need wool, which she does have, and she'll need whiskey, which she's planning on making herself. Right, so, now, Clan Buchanan's special power is, there's a couple of special powers. One is, Jen can hold two. Now remember, Jen... Um, she took a, uh, what do you call it, a contract in the first turn, so she gets five extra pounds. Hooray! So you want to get these contracts earlier. Now, Jen, as part of her special Clan Buchanan power is, she could take, in one action, she could take a second one right now. But if she takes a second one, she won't get the five-pound bonus. And Jen wants the five-pound bonus, so she's not going to take advantage of her more efficient grab multiple contracts all at once. She'll grab another contract on another round to make more money. At the end of the game, when it costs 15 pounds to take a contract, being able to grab two contracts in one action, which means it'll only cost 15 instead of 30 to get two, that'll be a big deal at the end of the game. But right now, Jen's just going to grab one contract because she was afraid I might have grabbed the one she wanted. Okay, so that was her turn. It's my turn again. And you better believe I'm going to go get myself a contract, right? Uh, because I want another five pounds. Let's see here. And I think I want a whiskey because I've got this whiskey distillery. I'll go on ahead and take this one because this one, I only have one distillery, so I'm only making one whiskey per turn. So I'll do this one that wants more bread. All right. Although bread costs a lot. Bread costs 11 now that I've driven the price up. So it's only going to get more expensive if I keep building bre my, making bread. Um, cheese is fairly cheap, though. So I think I'm going to take this one. And because I did it in the first round, I make another five pounds. Yeah. So I'm at 15, 16, 17, 18 pounds. I started with 60 pounds. Um, I'm getting broke. Uh, like I said, money goes fast in this game. So that was it. Now, 
Jen, once again, before the round is over, she'll take one of these three remaining contracts to make five more pounds. But in the meantime, she doesn't have to rush on that. She needs to decide what else she's going to do. She knows, right, she's, um, she needs meat. She needs meat. Now, she's getting low on cash. She's down to 25 pounds. And what is she going to do? Well, she probably wants to start setting up, um, let's see, this is lamb. This is a leg of lamb here. So she probably wants to start setting up some um, sheep. So now she can expand from here or from here. It would cost three or four to go into that space. So I think Jen is going to expand down here. Jen is going to um, do the first to uh, get some flocks of sheep. That costs one plus eight is nine. And so now, there's two interesting things about this. At the end of the round, this sheep will automatically produce wool, um, which you could then sell in the market or use for contracts, like, say, this contract she just picked up. And whenever she wants to complete a contract that requires meat, Jen can immediately slaughter these sheep, which means suddenly this is an empty space that anybody can expand into again and convert it into meat. All right, some, um, some lovely... Uh, like a lamb. Right. So that was Jen's turn. And she's down. She's starting to get low on cash. Pretty much what ends your progress in a given round is running out of cash to do anything. But remember, Jen's planning on taking another contract, which will get her another little influx of cash. I'm still sitting on some cash. Um, what am I going to do? Well, you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you kind of a rough idea of the basic flow of clans of Cal Caledonia. And now if you want to watch a little bit more action, you want to see this round play out and how it ends up and how we get our income and uh, you know score our bonuses, you can go to the extended playthrough by hitting that I or following the show notes, or you can go to Final Thoughts and hear what Jen and I thought of this game. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.